So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to give you the same usual tutorial, but hopefully it's going to be the start of something bigger, where we start looking at how to... Well, really, I want to try and make a sort of a fractal installation that responds to sound, and this is going to be the start of it. So this is just a little patch that draws ovals in a pattern, and at the moment it's being randomly generated from a cycle in the metro, but over the next few days I'm going to try and turn it into something that reacts to the sound it hears and draws different shapes and different patterns depending on how loud what's happening. So this little patch here that we're going to make is an adaptation of something by Peter Elissi, I think it is. And he made these great objects called L objects for Mac. Mac for Mac. Uh, and I really suggest you go and check them out if you haven't before. Uh, this is uh, what we're doing here. This is an adaptation of one of his tutorials where he shows us how to draw these using uh, his LAD object, which this is something it's the, the L objects he creates. They're basically just complicated mathematical expressions put into objects. And this one here, this is for centering in the frame. And these numbers here are offsetting that center. So no matter where we draw it, it's always going to try and come back to the center. But I'll explain more about the objects when we get to them, if we need them. But at the moment, all you need to know is that uh, go and download the L object and check out uh, Peter Elise's stuff. And as always, we're going to start off with a toggle and our metro. You can bang in whatever number you want here, but I like 50, something around 30 will do as well, as long as it's not too slow. And then we are going to use jet.lcd to draw our picture today. And it's going to be a four channel. Uh, and I'm just going to keep it 320 by 240 so things go smoothly for us. And we're going to put that all the way down here at the bottom. And we're going to add a P window to match it. Bring this in. And we're just going to change the patching rectangle to 320 by 240. And I'm going to plug that in as well. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to add some extra functions that allow us to draw the oval depending on what a random number is outputting. So I'm going to do a cycle here. I'm going to do cycle 440. Gain. And then what you need to do is, I'm not going to plug it in, but we still need an easy DAC so that sounds are recorded. And I'm just going to check that this is up. So you can see here it's outputting a signal, but it's the patch isn't actually generating any sound because it's not plugged in, which is what we want. Otherwise, this would be just an annoying screech, but it's the number it's outputting that we like. So this is our signal. And we're going to plug that into an average. We don't necessarily need to, but it's nice for the what we're doing here. And then we're going to multiply that average by 2,000, just so we get a number that's not ridiculously small. And for this to work, average needs to be receiving a bang from our metro. So we plug that in, we attach a message, and oh, oh turn it on. We need a little float here, and then you'll see. So we're now getting a value out of our saw, our cycle, excuse me, that'll change depending on the game. What we can do now is we're going to add this to a float. Now I'm going to use the actual float object rather than the little box here because we need to have two inputs that we can alternate between. And I'm going to put the 2000 into the right hand input of that. And I'm going to bring our metro into an Uzi with 64 outputs. If you don't know what Uzi does, it sends many bang messages at the same time. So we're going to send 64 bangs at the same time here. Uh, just a random multiplier of about 0 0.1. In fact, maybe that's 0, 0 0.1. And the output of our Uzi is going to go into the float. So now, what's this outputting? Let me show you. So it's putting out the combination of our Uzi by our random number of sound here. 
what we're going to do is we're going to put that into a pull to car. And the, the simplest way to describe what pull, pull to car does here is it's going to turn these values into coordinates for our oval, or our ovals, I should say. And we're going to get the second irrational, or fake, value from this made up number here. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to put these coordinates through a, an adjuster so we can change the center point if we want to. We're going to use a random integer over here to do that. So we're going to put this integer into the output of all of them. And then we're going to have x, x, y, y. I say x and y, but really what's, what pull the card has is it changed the polar, which is center, to the Cartesian, which means it's top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And we're going to put all of them together. And now we're going to use the lad object, and we're going to give it 160, 120, 160, 120. And that's going to organize our Cartesian coordinates so that they're always know where the center point is. And so it's not out here and at the end. We're going to prepend frame over. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn our coordinates into an oval. So we've got one bang forcing our average out. We've got one going to our Uzi, which is generating coordinates based on the sound that's coming in here. We've got our pull to car, so it's turning our center point into the corner points of everything. X, X, Y, Y. Packing it up, putting it to lad message, and prepending free and mobile. The very last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a clear message so that uh, the LCD constantly refreshes. So, so now, you can see we have a little circle dead in the center here. And as we change size, it will grow and shrink and grow and shrink and grow and shrink. Super. How do we jazz it up a little bit so that it looks a bit more exciting? Well, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a random 1, 2, 8. That's the maximum this can be. And I'm going to start banging that as well. So now we have a changing size of our oval. And just for giggles, 128 divided by 2 is 64. And that's going to move our object along this axis here at random. What I'm also done there is I've removed two of the controls on this so they're no longer in unison. And suddenly our object is being stretched across four different axes so that the points are constantly changing. And we're getting a much more dynamic thing just based on this random sound here. So you could replace cycle with something like a, a music track through SF Play, and that's the general gist of it here. In the original one, I included things like control over each of the individual four axes. I also added randoms for the color, just by adding a join message at the end. So if you pass a message into LCD, then instead of just four digits for the location, as an extra three for the color at the end. We can randomize that. We can add a counter here that doesn't clear instantly anymore. So let's say only every tenth object it clears. We delete that clear. Plug that in there. And that in there, into that. So now every 10 objects it'll clear. So if you keep watching over the next few days, what I'm going to try and do is turn this into a completely reactive. I'm going to move away from oval and we're going to start getting star shapes and interactive colors that hopefully has a really sort of ethereal and floating sort of feeling to it rather than the sporadic flashing. That's mostly just coming because of the pace of our metro. We slow it down a touch. And our randoms are probably spiking too much, but we'll look at that. We'll look at things like a ladder drunk onto that or a line so that it's smoothly ramping. Watch the space.